One of the biggest advantages to taking an in-platform approach to process mining is the speed at which you'll be able to start getting visibility into the reality behind your workflows. In a matter of minutes, you can have insights into your process inefficiencies, non-conformant activities, and improvement opportunities. Now, as an in-platform solution, process optimization helps our customers avoid many of the data access and availability challenges and data manipulation work that is typically part of a process mining project. In some cases, that data preparation work alone can take weeks. Another advantage our customers have is they already have the skills to configure their first process model. I like to say, if you can author a report on the ServiceNow platform, you can create a visualized process map. We're gonna use the next couple of minutes to walk through the process of creating our first visualized process map with process optimization. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come over here to your left-hand navigation and you're gonna search for process optimization. Once you get to that application, you'll click on the analyst workbench. Once you land on the analyst workbench, you're gonna be presented with all the projects that you've created or have been shared with you. And we're gonna use the create new button here to create our first project. We're gonna be mining incident data here today. So let's come in here and we'll say incident or actually, you know what? Let's call this my first process mining project. And we'll hit save. Now, in the Tokyo release, we, we added the ability for you to create process models that involved interconnected processes or multiple tables. So what we're gonna to do today, we're simply gonna be mining the incident table, but we're gonna come down here to the table configuration section and say new to add our incident table to this model. We'll say incident as the name, and then we need to choose our table. In this case, we're gonna choose the incident table. Now, any table that has audit records is available to be mined in this list. So we're gonna choose incident because that does have audit records. And then what we need to do is we need to start narrowing down the scope of the data that we want to mine uh, to help us answer the questions that we want to answer as part of this mining exercise. Now, best practice dictates that we mine closed records. In this case, it's going to be closed incidents. That's gonna give us an accurate representation um, and make sure that we're comparing apples to apples. And then you might wanna add some additional conditions. One of the things that we typically like to do is separate um, machine generated incidents versus human generated incidents. So we may come, choose to come in here and say, hey, you know what, from a channel perspective, I don't really want to include things that are generated by alerts in my analysis here today. And then you might also want to start bucketing it from a time range perspective, right? You don't really necessarily need to mine two years worth of incident data. You just want to mine a relevant set of data for your use case, sort of, again, for the questions that you're trying to answer with this mining exercise. I'm going to come in here and I know that my demo data um, all was closed before this year. So I'm just going to come in here and narrow it down to incidents that were closed before this year. I can use this preview button to come in here and give me a sense of the records that I'm going to be mining. If you were to click on this, it would show you the, those records and you can just make sure that they match match the criteria that you're interested in. Once I've narrowed or scoped the data that I want to mine, you can click the save button. And we really only have one more step that we need to take before we could actually mine this data. And that's what we, we need to add an activity definition. Now the activities, those are the things, the hops or the changes in the records that we want to track over uh, as the workflow moves towards closure. Now, typically what we start off with is we want to start tracking the state changes within a workflow. That's usually the, the first activity that we start for our first mining project. So we're going we're gonna to add state, uh, but you could also add things like assignment group if you want to start looking at assignment group hops inside of there, or maybe you want to start looking at uh, when a problem was created or attached to the incident, you could add that as an activity definition. We're just going to keep it as state, and I recommend for your first project, you keep state or you use state as your, your first activity. Now that's it, we could be done. We could mine the data right now. But to help with our analysis, we might also wanna add breakdowns. Breakdowns help us slice and dice the data that we're gonna see on our visualized process map. So typically you're gonna use things like, hey, I wanna break these depth, the map down or the data down by categories. Or you know, a very popular type of analysis is 
channel analysis. So let's add our channel. You can add up to 10 breakdowns per project. So we'll come in here and we'll add channel and we'll hit submit. And that's it, we're done. We've configured our first model. So now what we'll do is we'll go to project definition and then you've got two options. We can generate full model. We'll, we'll run this mining exercise against the full set of data that we scoped with our filter criteria, or you can generate sample model. And this is just gonna generate it against a subset of data. I'm gonna use generate sample model here. I recommend for your first try, you use sample model as well. And what this is doing now is it's harvesting the relevant data from the audit logs to match the filter criteria as well as our activities. Once that data is harvested, it's going to pass that data off to the machine learning infrastructure to do the heavy duty number crunching. One of the questions we typically get asked is, hey, is process mining or process optimization going to have any impact on our instance? And the answer to that question is no, because all of the heavy duty work is done by the machine learning infrastructure. Once that uh, data is picked up by the uh, machine learning infrastructure, it crunches the numbers and it's going to spit the finished model back into your instance and then we'll have a visualized process map. This can take anywhere from a, a few seconds to a couple of minutes, depending on the amount of data that you're mining. You can also schedule these so they run off hours or be notified when it's finished. In this case, it ran very quickly and now I can immediately go to my analyst workbench. We're done. That was it. That was a matter of two or three minutes. I could check the clock. You authored and created your first visualized process map. Now what you get by using the out of the box content packs that we provide is you get this summary and insights page, which gives us visibility into some of the key KPIs as it pertains to the process that we're focused on. In this case, our incident process. So we're looking at things like our MTTR as well as our first call resolution rate. It's all about the speed and productivity when it comes to this process. You also get pre-configured insight cards to help us identify common inefficiencies and problems with our workflows or non-conforming activities. So things like, hey, I've got records that take longer than seven days to go from close to resolve. We can focus in on these. Or let's say here's a quality issue where incidents and resolution has been rejected by the customer one or more times. I can quickly click on this and take me to a map of just that subset of incidents that met that criteria. We also get variation analysis, which shows us the common routes that the tickets are taking or the long running routes, if we want to focus on that type of analysis, as well as bottleneck analysis, which is going to show us the individual hops that the incidents are taking in this case. That's just the summary and insights page. Then, of course, you have your visualized process map, uh, which shows us the paths that all the incidents are taking to get to closure. We're just looking at the top 20% here. We can expand this to look at more incidents we can focus on focus in on individual hops within that to see the volume and velocity in which incidents are moving through those certain hops. And then of course we have those breakdowns that we configured in our model on the left-hand side of the screen to help us start analyzing different aspects of the incidents that we've mined in this case. All of that power at your fingertips in a matter of minutes. Huge, huge uh, advantage by taking an in-platform approach to process mining. To get started, what you need to do is activate a few content packs, uh, the process optimization content pack, as well, uh, plugin, sorry, as well as uh, the content pack for the associated workflow. And there's details around that in the related blog post in which you found this video.